everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to a tutorial of what I'm calling the Boxy Boho Sweater. This is what it looks like. First, you're gonna notice I'm not in my studio. I'm actually in my exercise room, which echoes a little bit but my kids are in, they're here to see my two new grandsons. So they're staying with us and my studio has been co-opted by my one daughter. So I've been sent to the exercise room to film. I'm sorry it's taken me some time to do this tutorial of this sweater. We've been really busy. Two new additions to the family and they are precious, my two new grandsons. And one of the couples that had a baby also bought a new home, so they've been trying to move in. So. We've been trying to help them out as much as possible by watching the baby, which of course is such a pleasure for us. We don't mind that at all. All that to say, I'm finally back. You're gonna see more videos again. And I'm back with this sweater, which I really love. I had done a tutorial of granny rectangles and I told you I'd be designing a sweater around it. And this is that sweater. So what you'll need to do if you're gonna make this sweater is go to that tutorial, which I'll put a link right here to that tutorial, and you'll need to make eight of those granny rectangles. And those rectangles make up the sleeves. So you can see I have four on each sleeve. So that's what you'll be doing with those. This sweater is really simple construction. It's made up of four granny rectangles for the sleeves, and then a front and back panel that are exactly the same and done in a single crochet. And then I added a little bit of trim to the neckline and to the sleeve to tighten it up. And I'll actually show you a picture of what it looks like without the trim and tightening the sleeve. So you can decide what you want to do. You can also add trim at the bottom if you wanted to tighten the bottom up a little bit. I actually like this boxy crop fit. Feel like it hides some stuff going on down there so it's up to you as always with my patterns make them your own and you might want to make this sweater longer not use the trims change up the colors whatever you want to do basically what i'm going to do is show you how i made this for my body size and you can adjust it for yours um, a few measurements you'll need you can either take from your body or from a sweater that you like You'll want to know basically either your shoulder width or the widest part of your body width so that you know how wide to make your front and back panels. And if you have a sweater that fits you nicely, just measure that so you know that. For the length, what I did was as I made one of the panels, I just held it up and said, yep, that's the length I want. And then I made the second panel to match that one. So you don't even have to know that measurement ahead of time. Other measurements you'll want to know from your sweater or from your body, the length of your sleeve and the circumference of the biggest part of your arm and also the measurement from your shoulder down to your armpit so that you can make sure that when you attach your sleeve you have enough room for your arm in there. Those are basically the measurements and I kind of do it as I go. I used four rectangles with just a little bit of trim attaching them. If you find that four rectangles are not big enough for your arm, you can either add rounds to your rectangle or for the trim, just add some extra rows. Keeping in mind that if you go around, you'll also be lengthening this sleeve as well as making it wider. Hopefully all of this is making sense. If not, it'll make more sense as you go through the process. Also, I wanted to mention, for the panels, I doubled up my yarn. I used two balls of yarn and crocheted them together because I wanted a really heavy sweater. If you're not in a cold climate, this weight sweater would probably kill you. <laughs> or if you have hot flashes, you might not want it this heavy. You might just want to use one ball of yarn and make the panels, totally up to you. I used Karen Simply Soft yarn and a six millimeter hook. You can use any yarn, any hook that you like, because as you do this, I'm not giving you a number of stitches to do. I'm saying 
take this measurement, make your chain that long, and then do your single crochets or whatever the instructions are. Just choose a yarn you like and a corresponding hook size that you like, and you can go from there. That's the way I like to do my patterns so that you're not stuck doing what I'm doing. I want you to be able to use what you want and still be able to make whatever it is that I'm making. I decided to go with the main color and then the colors of my granny rectangles here, which you'll see in that video. You can do it any way you like. I used a total of five colors. I have the main body color and then the colors in my granny rectangles. Again, do it any way that you like to do it. All right, enough talking. Let's get started. Okay, so once you have eight of your granny rectangles, what I'm going to do is put a trim around each one in the color that I want to see attaching the granny rectangles in my sleeve so that the seams will all be that color. I hope that makes sense. Um, so for example, I decided to go with the black. Okay, because I thought that would be a really nice um, color so that when I attach them, I'll be attaching them with the black and it'll be black seams on my sleeves. So you're going to want to do this for each of your granny rectangles with whatever color you want to use. And if you want to use the outer edge and not have seams showing, that's up to you also. So like I said, I'm going to use the black. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the corner between my three double crochets in that chain space there. And I'm going to pull my yarn through and close it up and drop the tail. And then I'm going to do three single crochets in the corner. One, two, three. I'm just going to go right over this. I'm going to lay the tail along the edge and we're going to go into each stitch along the side and do a single crochet. So this is what you're going to do all the way around. In each stitch, you'll do a single crochet. Until you get to the corners and in the corners, you're going to do three double crochets just to turn the corner. Sorry if you hear my stomach there. There we go, just like that, all the way around. And three single crochets in your corners. When you get to the end, just slip stitch it together and trim it off, and you'll have a nice black trim. Okay, so here I am coming up to the corner. Just wanted to show you this. So I'm going to go in each stitch. until I get to this chain space where I'm going to do three single crochets, two, and three. And then I'm just going to continue around the other side, just like that. I'm going to do a single crochet in each stitch. And there's my corner. So, just continue doing that in whatever color you choose and you'll have your edging and then I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so once you have all of your rectangles done with the trim and I haven't sewn in my ends yet, you can see, but I will do that. We're gonna use four to make a sleeve. So basically we're gonna attach them here and like this. And this folded in half will make your sleeve. So you want to check the width on this with the thickest part of your arm. You just measure around your arm, make sure it's big enough. If not, you can put extra rounds here, or you could do extra rounds in your rectangle, however you'd like to do that. So I have 14 and a half inches here, and my upper arm, let me just measure that. I'm wearing a sweater right now. 
but my upper arm is about 13 inches. So I have enough here to put the sleeve together. If you don't, like I said, you can add more rounds of your trim. You can do extra rounds of your rectangle. Just make it big enough so that you know that this will fit around your arm. So the next thing we wanna do is attach these. So I'm gonna just start with two of them and I'm gonna fold them right sides together like this. I'm just gonna show you without even sewing in my ends here, but um, you know, I'll sew them in at the end or as I go, we'll see how that goes. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black, the same color as my trim, and I'm gonna find the corner stitch. And I'm just gonna stick my hook through the corner stitch on both of the rectangles like that. And I'm gonna take my yarn and pull it through both of them, attaching them. And I'll just close that like that and drop my tail. Now you can weave over your tail, however you wanna work that. I'm gonna show you without weaving over just so you can see what I'm doing. It's kind of hard with the black, I know, and I apologize for that. But you're gonna go into each stitch, just like this, on each side, each of your rectangles, pull through and slip stitch. That's it, and we're just gonna go all the way down, slip stitching. There's the one rectangle and then the other rectangle. And pull it through and slip stitch. And you just continue that way all the way down, just this one side to attach your two rectangles. And since your rectangles are the same, each it should be easy as you go along like that. And I'll just show you when you open it up, because you did your trim in that color, you don't even see how it attaches. So you're just gonna do that all the way down to the end and I'll meet you there. So I'm at the end here, I just did my last stitch. I'm just gonna pull through and fasten off. There we go. And open it up and show you what that looks like. There, and those two are attached. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is attach your next two the same way, right sides together and go down the side and that will, then what we'll do is attach each set of two to each other to create one sleeve. So go attach your next two and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I have my two sets of two rectangles and I'm going to want them to go this direction to make a sleeve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one panel on top of the other, right sides together, and I'm going to slip stitch down. So same idea that we just did. Let me just turn it this way. I'll start here. And, and the reason that I'm doing it here on that side just so I can show you, is I want my rectangles the long way from my sleeve. So my sleeve is gonna look like this. So in order to attach them that way, I just wanna fold this over and do a seam down here. All right, so I'll start over on this side and show you. It's the same exact thing that we were doing before. And then when I meet you back here, I will have it all sewn together and my ends weaved in. <laughs> okay. I have limited time for filming today. I've been busy with the two grandbabies, which is so exciting, but I wanted to make sure to get in here and do this for you. Okay. So now, just like before, I'm gonna go in each stitch. So the first one on this side, and the first one on this side, and slip stitch through. There we go. And I'm just gonna do that 
all the way down like that until it's attached. So continue to do that and I will meet you back here. Okay, and this is what our sleeve looks like sewn together. And what's going to happen is it's going to fold this way around your arm. So that's going to be the sleeve. So go ahead and make your second sleeve the same way you made this first sleeve. And then we will attach these to the sweater. For the panels for the body, it's going to be a simple single crochet and you're going to make a rectangle in whatever size you want. You're going to actually make two rectangles and they're going to be exactly the same. One for your front panel and one for your back panel. So what I did was I used two balls of yarn at once to make a much thicker material and that's totally up to you. If you get really hot or if you're in a warmer place, you're probably not going to want to use two balls of yarn together. It's pretty chilly here and I was in the mood for a warm sweater so I used two together. Now what I did was I measured shoulder to shoulder on about 15 inches and I made this 17 inches wide because I wanted some extra room. Yeah, about 17. There you go. You can decide on your width, measure your shoulders or the biggest part of your upper body that you want the sweater to go around. Since this is a boxy fit, it's pretty much straight up and down. You can see it's a rectangle. So you just want to make sure that this gets around the biggest part of your body. So whatever that is, measure that side to side and make sure you make that your width. And what you're going to do is start with a chain, the length of that biggest part. So for me, I wanted it 17 inches, so I made a 17 inch chain. Now, if you know that when you crochet, your work gets smaller, you're going to want to add a few extra chains. If you know that it gets larger, then maybe take off a few of the chains. So it came out for me that I wanted 50 stitches across. So I started out with 51 chains because when you turn, you're going to go into that second chain. And I'm just going to do a small sample and show you. Okay, so what I did was I took two balls of yarn and I just held them together and made a slip knot. And again, I made 51 chains for my sweater, but you measure and do whatever you want for yours. A chain, I'll just do like 10 to show you. It's very simple. Okay, and add one more for the turn. That's why I do 51 instead of 50. And you're gonna go into your second chain from the hook, do a single crochet. You're just gonna do that all the way back. And this is your entire two panels, very simple, single crochet. And what I did was I held the panel up as I was doing it to see how long I wanted it. I wanted a crop sweater. So this came out to be about 17 and three quarter inches long, but I simply just held it up to my body and said, yep, <laughs> I like that. And you can make it as long as you like. It's the beauty of this sweater. You can really do whatever you want with it. Okay, so coming to my last stitch here. And then all I'll do each row is chain one and turn. And then I'll just go into my first stitch there and single crochet back. Okay, so you're gonna wanna make two panels of single crochet in whatever size you want. And then we'll come together and we will start putting it together. Another thing you can do is you can just take out one of your sweaters that you really like the fit on and measure the front panel of that sweater. There's many ways to do this. You can use your body or your favorite sweater to measure and get exactly what you want. Okay, so once you have your two panels, which I have here, we're going to put them together at the shoulder seam. Okay, so what I want to do is put right sides together. Now, the right side of your work, let me see if I can show you here. I've shown this in other videos. You know it's the right side when you can see both the upper and lower part of the stitch. If it's on the wrong side, you're only going to see the back of 
the stitch, okay? So that's how you know your right side from your wrong side. And what I'm going to do is put my right sides together. There we go. Like this. Make sure my right side here. Did I lay it down right? Yeah. I'll tell you, I can't remember from one minute to the next anymore. <laughs> okay, so for my neck hole, I'm going to use nine inches. I want. Okay. And again, you can measure your sweater, one of your sweaters, to see if what size neck hole you want. Uh, nine inches seems to work for me. Okay. So I'm going to measure my panel here is, looks like 17 and a half inches. So the center of 17 and a half is eight and three quarters, right? <laughs> if my math is correct, which would be right here. This is the center. So I'm going to just put a marker in that stitch. Let me hold that. If I have a marker, there we go. This was a pretty marker that was given to me by one of our subscribers. Very sweet, okay. All right, so that's the center. So basically what I'm gonna do is since I want nine inches, I'm gonna put a stitch marker four and a half inches to each side of the center. And that will be a nine inch hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and thirteen. Okay, so I did it from the thirteenth. When I measured the center, it may not have been the exact center. This way I know that from the ends I'm gonna have equal amounts. So I did put it in the thirteenth from each end. So you want to always make sure that your numbers make sense. Yeah, and that's still nine inches. Okay, so that's good. And I'll take out the center one. And now I will put my stitch markers 13th from each end on the other panel. Now, if all of that didn't make sense to you, I apologize. But what I was doing was finding basically the center getting nine inches, but then I also wanted to make sure that it's the same from the end. So when I get to about my nine inches, I just check my number of stitches because my stitches are consistent. And so I have the same number of stitches on each side and this will be the center. Okay, I hope that made sense. And if you have any questions, remember, feel free to email me or write in the comments. I try to make this as easy to understand as possible, but I, Realize sometimes I'm not that easy to understand. Okay, so in the 13th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13th stitch here. And the 13th from the other end. I'm gonna use a color that shows up more. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteenth stitch there. All right, there we go. Now we're going to put it right sides together. So this is my right side showing because I can see both sides of the stitch. And this is the right side, so I'm going to turn it down. And now what I'm going to do. is I am going to take the panels and slip stitch in each stitch until I get here, fasten off. And then I will slip stitch from here to here and fasten off and that will leave me my neck hole. So let me just grab my yarn and I'm just gonna slip stitch single ply. I'm not gonna use both balls of yarn to slip stitch. So I'll take my hook and starting in the end, I'm just going to get my hook into that first stitch on each piece. And 
attach my yarn, pull it through. <laughs> Harder task than I thought. <laughs> and fasten off, and then I'm just going to drop the tail. Now, you can go over your tail if you want to, or you can just let it hang in the back and leave it in in the end. I'm going to let it hang so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to go under each stitch on each panel in the same stitch. I'm going to pull the yarn through and slip stitch just like that. Go into the next stitch and they should line up perfectly because you made your panels the same and slip stitch just like that until you get to your stitch marker. Make sure they're lining up. This is stitch 10, 11. Okay, and we're going to put it in this stitch. Okay. So I ended up doing 12 stitches because I attached in the first one. So that's why it's one less, even though stitch markers in the 13th stitch, just in case you were wondering. Now I'm just going to fasten off. And you don't need to know those numbers. Just make sure that you're ending where both your stitch markers are. Fasten off here. And I will weave in that end. Now I'm going to come over to this side here. And I think I'm going to work from the outside in. I like doing that better. So again, I'm going to attach these ends and I'm going to slip stitch over to where these stitch markers are. So just do that and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I have both sides sewn to the neck hole. This is my neck hole here. So I can take out my stitch markers and weave in my end. Okay, so here is my front and back panel sewn together, wrong sides together. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is attach our sleeves. So I'm going to just open this up. This is the right side to, of my sweater. And this was when right sides were together. So I just want to show you what this is going to look like. So with my right sides facing, basically what I want to do is attach my sleeve so that this seam matches up with my shoulder seam. Okay. So what I'm going to do is attach these with a stitch marker. But what I want to do is these are my right sides. This is my right side of my sleeve. So I'm going to put right sides together again with the seams matching. Okay, and then I am going to make sure that these fall evenly on each side here. So first things first, let's put the seams together. So I'm going to get my stitch marker. I'm going to put it right in the seam, my shoulder seam here, and I'm going to put it right in the seam down the center of my sleeve. There we go. All right. Now I can just count how many rows down I want to attach this. So this looks like it's coming to this row here. So we'll say, just looking at my sweater here. Let me lift this up. Okay, so here's one row, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In the twelfth row here is where I'm going to put this and attach the corner 
of this right here. Let me make sure I'm in the corner there. The corner, there we go. Okay. So now I'm gonna go 12 rows the other direction. I wanna make sure everything's even. So here's my seam. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. That's this row here. And I'm gonna put my, oops, I don't know if I was off camera, it's this row here. And I'm gonna put my corner attach that to that row as well. Just want to make sure we're doing the same thing on both sides. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just look at this and make sure that looks good. And I am going to slip stitch along here, attaching the sleeve to the sweater. We have right sides together. So to attach this sleeve, which color am I going to use? You can use either color. I think when it opens up here, I think we're going to use the lighter color to attach them. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so. Again, the way we've been doing this, same way all along. Now, if you want a stronger seam, you can single crochet rather than slip stitch. Totally up to you. And let me just get my hook in this spot on both things so I don't mess that up. And I'm going to pull it through and attach. There we go. And then I'm going to sew. So again, if you think you're tough on your seams, use a single crochet. It's a little bit bulkier, but it will hold it better. All right. So if I were to use a single crochet, I'm just going to go in. And these are rows rather than stitches. So you're kind of just, you know, doing your best to match things up. Okay, there we go. So I'm just kind of going in each row and matching up to a stitch, not necessarily the next stitch, because you're gonna have more stitches than rows. And trying to keep it even all the way along. Another thing you can do is just pin if you want to make sure you're keeping it even all the way along. And that's all you're gonna do to attach your sleeve. Just making sure that my seam's staying together there. And just so you can see how this looks on the other side, let me just flip this over right now before I'm done. And this is what it's going to look like here as you're attaching it. Okay, so just continue to do that and attach your whole sleeve. And I'll meet you back here. So once the sleeve is sewn on, now here's my neck hole. It's still right sides together, so you're looking at the wrong side of the sweater here. I have folded my sweater back in half the way it'll look, and my sleeve also folds in half like this, so this is going to be my sleeve. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is just stitch. I'm going to start at the end of my sleeve, stitch all along here and down the side of my sweater. And then I will have my sleeve and my sweater attached and closed up. You can start wherever you want. You can start at the bottom of your sweater if you like and run up and under your sleeve or this direction. Now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use two different color yarns. So I'm gonna sew 
down the bottom of my sleeve in the black. And then when I get to the sweater, I'll, I'll fasten off here and then I'll go down here in the light color. So I won't have opposite colors on these different pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the end of my sleeve. I'm gonna grab my black yarn. Where's my black yarn? There it is. Okay. And my hook. And I'll just turn this like this. And again, going from the end of my sleeve all the way up to my armpit over here is where I'm going to use the black and slip stitch this all the way up. And you can single crochet however you want to attach. I'm just going to slip stitch this starting in the corner of each sleeve, attaching my yarn. Oh, get back in there. <laughs> there you go. And I'll drop the tail and I will just start going up the sleeve one stitch at a time because the sleeve should match up. I'm just going to do this, pull it tighter, and each stitch going up. Okay, so just do that, and then do down the side of your sweater. Now again, I'm going to use the lighter color for down the side of my sweater. One thing you may want to do is just use a stitch marker to attach, make sure your seams are matching up on your sleeve as you go. And that way it'll help keep it in place. And you can slip, uh, put stitch markers in all along just to keep it together the way you want it to. Pin it, stitch markers, however it works best for you. I'm going to definitely stick one right here. Make sure these seams match up as I'm sewing just like that. And then you could stick, you know, one or two in to make sure you're just matching up and getting this right as you sew. Okay, so I have it sewn up the side here and under the sleeve. And now I'm just gonna go do the same thing to the other side, get my sleeve on, sew it up the side, up the sleeve. The sleeve I sewed with my trim color and this I sewed up with the color of the main part of the sweater. So go do that and I will meet you after that. Okay, so this is the sweater done without any trim so far. So I have a boat neck. I have no extra ribbing on my sleeves or on the bottom. So it's just like a boxy boho kind of look. Really cute, I like this. Uh, one thing I want to make sure I mention is that you know the measurement from the top of your shoulder to your armpit so that you make sure that when you attach the sleeve, you attach it down low enough. So you can stop here, but what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to add a neckline trim and I'm going to do some trim around the sleeves to turn it into a balloon sleeve. Okay, so to do the trim on the various parts, I have my sweater right side out now. so. This is the way I'd be wearing it, and I'm gonna work on it right side out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the neckline, which is very simple. All I'm gonna do is take, now you could use coordinating colors here for the neckline if you wanted to. You could use any color from your sweater. I'm gonna continue with the main color for the neckline. I just want it to be the same. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach my yarn in a stitch. I'll just do it here at the edge like this. Attach it and drop my tail. It can actually just go right over my tail and in every stitch I'm just going to do a single crochet around just like this. 
Now, you can mark where you started if you want. And basically what I'm gonna do is go around three times. I think that's about the height of the neckline that I want. And I will slip stitch each time I come around just to finish off the round and chain one and start my next round. So it's quite simple, just single crochets. So basically the shell of the sweater, the front and back panel and the trim, it's all single crochet, so it's very simple. The granny squares take a little bit more work, but, or granny rectangles, I should say, take a little bit more, but still quite simple, I think. And boy, does this have heft. So I'm doing the neckline in a single ply because I didn't want it really thick around my neck. Uh, you can continue with the double if that's what you like, depending also on what you did with your sweater. But I think it'll also make the neckline a little bit more flexible when going over my head because it's more stiff when you have the two plies. But boy, is this a warm sweater. I would not recommend making this if you're in a warm climate. You will never wear it. But if you have some cold weather, this could be really nice. Just come right around. Boat necks can be nice, but I find I have rather broad shoulders for my size, so that a boat neck really just accentuates that for me. So I like something a little bit softer for myself, but if you want your shoulders to look more broad, which can give your waist a narrower look, a boat neck can be nice for that. My fingers have to be strong to hold up this sweater. <laughs> it is on the heavy side. And this is my daughter's dog. His name is Boomy. He's visiting us and he's very playful. He's a puppy and Einstein, not so much. He's an old guy who really doesn't want to be bothered. <laughs> and Boomy tries to get him to play, but unsuccessfully so far. And I'm back to my first stitch right here. So I'm just going to slip stitch to it right there and chain one and then continue around again. So I'm going to do that probably for this round and one more round. I'll see how I like it. You can do it as many rounds as you like. Try on your sweater, see how you like the neckline and uh, make that decision for yourself. So just continue on, single crochet in every stitch to you get to the beginning and slip stitch to the first stitch, chain one and go into your next round. Or if that's your last round, just slip stitch and fasten off. All right, I'll see you at the end. Okay, so I finished the neckline and I did three rows, which is really all that I wanted to soften the boat neck edge, but you could go as long as you want. You could even make it into a turtleneck that you fold over, but that's what I did. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this wide sleeve which I actually liked. And if you watched my last sweater video, I left the sleeves wide, but I decided to do a balloon sleeve. So I tightened up the sleeve here. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll show you how to do that on this one. And I used the black since the trim was already in black. So I'm just continuing that. Okay, so the first thing you do is you're just going to attach your yarn in any stitch and I'll tell you what I did from my uh, sleeve. I have 
fairly small risk, so you may not need to decrease as much as I did. But for the first round, let me see here. Okay, so I attach and then I chain one. And for the first round, I'm gonna decrease the opening in half. So I'm going to do a decrease in every stitch. So what I do is, I'm sorry it's so hard to see with the black. I'm gonna go into the first stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then I yarn over and pull through all three. And that turns two stitches into one. Again, I go into the stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So what I'm doing is just decreasing my stitches by half. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. And then when I come to the end, I'm just gonna slip stitch to my first chain that I made. Okay, so uh, you can do this and I will meet you at the end of this round. Okay, so I'm coming around to the end of the round here. So I'm just gonna go in to my last two stitches and then I'm going to slip stitch to my first stitch. Now for me, this is still a big opening. So in my second round, I'm gonna decrease again, but I'm gonna decrease by less. So I'm gonna decrease in every other stitch. So I'm gonna chain one for this round. The first stitch, I'm going to go in and decrease, go into the next and pull through all of them. And then in the next one, I'm just gonna do a regular single crochet. And I'm gonna alternate like that all the way around. So the next will be a decrease in the next two stitches. And then the next stitch will just be a single crochet. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. And you can decide for you if you need it smaller. You can decrease every other stitch, you can decrease every third stitch, whatever you think you need. And what I did after this, I decreased every other stitch, slip stitch, chain one, and then I just did a round of single crochets without decreasing. So continue this round and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of this round. I'm just going to do my last single crochet and slip stitch to the beginning. And now for my very last round, I'm just gonna chain one and just do a single crochet in each stitch. And I found, you can see here, it's much tighter. So I have tiny wrists. You may not want to decrease this much. So just make sure you check that out for your wrist. Now I'm just gonna do one round of single crochets and fasten off and my sleeves will be done. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. As always, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below or send an email to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Also, if you're doing this project, I would love to see it. Uh, if you can send me pictures and write a description, the yarns you used, anything you learned from the project, uh, any tips you have for somebody else doing it, I'd love to hear all of that and I know everybody else would too. And if you send that to me, I will put it in the Crochet and Tell series. Okay, as always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.